Hey guys, how you doing? It's Maddie. Um, I thought I'd come on here and make a video. So today I'm decided to do a story time. You probably can tell from the title. Um, it's uh, like it's my story time of being in an earthquake. <laughs> I'm so fucking cool, aren't I? And I know for some of you guys, like, earthquakes are probably just like a normal thing. I need to put this down. I know for some of you guys, earthquakes might be a normal thing, but for me, it's not. <laughs> um, well, kind of is now, because I live in a city where earthquakes are very prone to happen. Um, but, yeah, so I thought I'd just come on here, tell you a bit about it, and document it. Um, I don't actually, okay, I have stories written on my phone like when I, I write them down when they happen but I don't have a story from this one written down so it's, I'm just going from memory here it was let me actually google when the earthquake was so I can give you a date the date was November 14th 2016 so if you don't know what I'm talking about it was the Kaikoura earthquake in Wellington it was actually not in Wellington it was in Kaikoura but it also hit Wellington um, it was a magnitude 7.8 and it occurred at 11 Oh, 02. I feel like it actually happened at 1202, but maybe not. So that could be the 15th of November, but Wikipedia is telling me that it was actually at 11, but I'm pretty sure it was at 12. But basically, what happened is the fault in Kaikoura ruptured. Um, well, it didn't rupture, it just, I don't know, did that little thing where it goes slide, um, and it scared a whole shit ton of people. I was in Wellington for it, and so I. Wellington's very prone to earthquakes, so everything here is like earthquake proof. So we were fine. Um, we were just in an 11 story building, which I'll, t I'll talk to you about in a minute. But Kaikoura was absolutely just, it was destroyed. It wasn't absolutely destroyed. There were still people who lived there and were doing okay, but houses were destroyed. The main road to get there was covered in landslides, so it was really hard to get there. But yeah, so it hit, it hit Kaikoura and there were. They needed like help, they needed, my cousin, my, not my cousin, my uncle actually went over there um, and helped out the people there by like just giving them food, water, helping them build shelters, um, trying to clear up the main path, which actually was cleared up quite quickly. People did actually suffer from it and I was I'm, like one person, I think a few people did die, but like not many people died. Like it was actually, it was a good, it was a good earthquake in comparison to places in Japan and stuff like that. <laughs> Rating the earthquake, it was solid like, you know, five, didn't have much damage, but it was still pretty freaky. But yeah, I'm, I'm just saying this is from my point of view in Wellington where everything is basically earthquake proof and earthquake resistant. So I was basically in no danger, but there are people who did suffer from the earthquake and I would link something down in the description to help people, but I don't think people are looking for help anymore, seeing as it did happen in 2016, that was like two years ago. Anyway, so now my, my point of view of the story. So basically, we actually didn't even live in Wellington at the time, we were coming down for one night to look at some houses and um, schools in the area, um, and yeah, it was just the night of the earthquake, which really sucked for us. But it basically started off like this, we, the whole, the first day we were there, we were here for two days, um, the first day was just us looking around at houses and we booked into the Bolton Hotel, I'm not sure what it was, and we were on the 11th floor. Um, so yeah, we all just went to bed normally that night, not much really happened before then because, like, I don't know, we didn't expect an earthquake, so I can't really say, oh yeah, we were preparing for it and stuff, but we weren't. Um, so it was a normal night, we all just went to bed, we were all asleep, I'm pretty sure, when the earthquake hit, so that was cool. Got a nice sleep in before I was r rudely awakened. But yes, and then the earthquake starts. Um, I was asleep for the beginning part of it, and I was slowly woken up by my bed shaking. Um, and at first, my first thought was my sister's waking me up and shaking my bed to wake me up, because it must be morning right now. Um, and then when I opened my eyes, it was still pitch black and my sister was in her bed. Um, and we slowly kind of like rose up and uh, just kind of looked around. I looked at her, she looked at me. We were like, why are our beds shaking? Why do we need to get up? What the crap? Um, and I didn't, I didn't know what time it was, uh, so I just assumed it was just, it was night. 
Um, and then I remember me yelling, earthquake. Um, I was just like, oh my god, earthquake. Fuck. I didn't say that. I just said earthquake. But so yeah, then me and my sister got up and went to the doorway. Absolutely terrified. I could hear the beams and like the building creaking and shaking and stuff. We were swaying side to side because we were on the 11th floor. So we were quite high up and the building was fine. It was just very wobbly. Um, and the earthquake was still going on at this time. My parents then came from their room into the doorway we were in, which is also like the doorway to the hotel. Like it's our, um, it was the door to the hotel and then straight away was our bedroom. So we were basically standing in this area with lots of doorways, which apparently is the safest um, place. So we were standing in there. My parents came to check on us because um, earthquake, where are my kids? Um, and this is still why the earthquake is going on. So we were all standing in the hallway, which obviously didn't fit us. Our parents were actually standing in the hallway. We were standing in the doorway. Um, and we were kind of just like holding on, freaking out. Um, apparently my parents found it quite hard to stay up and I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I was finding it fine. I was just holding on being like, holy fuck, what's going on? Um, and like, I thought I was going to die. I was like, this building is going to crumble into a million pieces and I'm going to fall from the 11th floor and break all my bones in my body and just sit there and die. Um, and after that, the, I think the earthquake eventually stopped. We were all just like freaking out. We were like, what the crap? We were just looking at each other being like, what the crap? Um, we could hear everyone in the hotel like running out of their doors um, down the stairwell because obviously you don't use lifts when there's been an earthquake because they could be damaged in some way and I'm pretty sure they immediately turned off the elevator so you couldn't take them down. Um, so that was good. Um, we were all in our pyjamas so we had to get uh, like into some sort of clothes because it was going to be cold outside and we had to wait outside because you understand the building that just had an earthquake. Um, so we, I remember as we were getting our clothes on and I was the first one done so I ran out of the room and started going down the stairwell from the 11th floor, which took, it actually didn't take that long because I was running. Um, and I could hear my mum behind me being like, no, wait up, wait up. I want like the whole family to go at once. And I was just like, no. And I ran um, all the way down. And I, I think, I think they just followed me. I don't remember most of this because like it happened two years ago and I was in shock. Like the days after I was in shock. Um, so yeah, and we were just running out of the hotel and people were running out of the hotel, the whole stairwell was just full of people looking at each other. I was kind of smiling because I was, I find, I find natural disasters kind of fun and like a thrill, like a thriller. Um, and so I was kind of enjoying it, but then I was also being like, holy shit, I'm going to die. Um, I made it out of the hotel, so we were all waiting out on the side of the road outside the hotel. Um, people, were in, people were in the lobby, I think, um, directing everyone outside. And I could see people coming out and they were just in their boxes and stuff. And those people actually got blankets. And I was quite kind of annoyed because I was out there in short shorts. And Auckland is warm, so we can wear short shorts basically any time during the year. And Wellington, you cannot. It's cold in Wellington, and I mean this was summer, summer like night, so it was it was okay, but it was still cold, and I never got a blanket, so I'm kind of you know, what the crap. Um, and they after like, I think maybe ten fifteen minutes after the uh, initial earthquake, the they opened back up the lobby with hot drinks and stuff for all the people waiting outside. Most people came inside into the hotel lobby. Um, and we all just hung out there for a bit. My family and I decided not to go back up to our room after the earthquake. We decided to not really take anything, just get our car from the car park and drive to um, some of our family here in Wellington, stay with them for the night. And that's basically what we did for the rest of the night. We, we came to their place, we might have had a bit of food, but we um, mostly just gone to bed um, and they had luckily had some room for us so I think my sister and my dad slept on the couch downstairs and me and my mum slept in the spare bed they had. The next morning we woke up and I think, I can't remember the order, either we went to the hotel and then got food or we got food and then we went to the hotel. 
Um, I think we got food first. So we were on our way to this cafe, which actually I really like. This cafe I wish I could go back to. I think we haven't gone back to since. It might have been closed due to like slides and stuff above it. Um, but we went to this hotel and had a bit of breakfast. And we went to this cafe to have a bit of breakfast. And I believe on the way to the um, cafe we actually called um, Air New Zealand to change our flight. Because we were meant to be leaving that afternoon. But because of what had just happened we wanted to leave earlier. Yeah, in New Zealand was actually really, really amazing, I'm pretty sure, about this whole thing. Um, and they were letting everyone in, like get early flights and stuff from Wellington. And they were completely cool with the fact that we wanted to change our flight to be earlier. And so we got an earlier flight, and so we had a bit of food. We went and grabbed our stuff from the hotel room. And that's actually when we first could see the damage done to the hotel room, because we were all in such a panic. I swear, like, that damage happened after we left because I, w I must have just been going so fast I didn't look around the room to see what was happening. So apparently a painting had fallen off the wall. There are a few cracks in um, walls, but like I said, Wellington is prone to earthquakes, like small ones and, I guess, big ones. Um, so, like, the hotel could withstand it. I was quite surprised, though, that the TV didn't fall over because the TV's just, like, on these two little legs and stuff, like, with the TV going up. And, like, you would have thought that would fall over because that wasn't bolted in place. And the, like, the, I don't, how would the painting fall off the, like, wall? It must have been, like, going up and down for it to get off the hook. And so that's what I'm amazed about. Uh, I think maybe a few cups and stuff had fallen over. I don't know. Like, it was whatever. We did also have a little bit of laugh um, afterwards because during the earthquake, my mum actually had said, get under the table because that might be safer. And what she didn't realise was the table was actually a glass table. So, little random fact I throw it in there for you. Mum once told me during an earthquake to get under a glass table because I might be safer. Which I wasn't. <laughs> when we got back to Auckland, where I lived at the time, uh, I, I think we missed out one or maybe two days of school. I, when I did go back to school, though, um, I didn't realise it, but I was actually in shock. I felt fine, but I was in shock and I started feeling quite sick. So I ended up going home. I talked to the nurse and stuff and she was, we got on the subject of the earthquake and I said, oh yeah, I was down there and she was like, oh, so yeah, you're in shock by the way. Just thought I'd let you know and I didn't know, but yeah, so that's why I felt sick and that's why I came home that day. So yeah, that was, I don't know, that was my, that was my earthquake story. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. Usually the story times have like a, have a lesson in them, don't they? Um, I could just go with um, the lesson being don't listen to your mum when she tells you advice during an earthquake otherwise you might end up under 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 a glass table. So follow me on all my social medias by all my social medias I just mean Instagram because that's all I have I don't have any I do have other stuff but I don't know it's just not related to the channel um, and yeah I'm back and hope you guys enjoy that. So that's a fact about me. Um, I was in an earthquake. So I'm gonna leave you guys on a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, and I'm gonna maybe kind of tell you what my next story time might be. So it may or may not be related to me, moi, swallowing a New Zealand dollar coin. So if you wanna hear the story about that, leave it in the comments below, like the video, follow me on my Instagram, um, subscribe to the channel and you know what actually comment have you ever been in an earthquake or some natural disaster and what was your story how do you feel about them are you like me where you love them and kind of want them to happen more often but without the whole like destruction and death part so yeah also do I look good in beanies I don't know yet just trying it out because my hair is really greasy so see you